introduce my wife, Kim, who is sitting here in the front row, and uh, our good friend Shirley from Hoffman, from Messiah, and uh, the reason we're able to be out here is that we have lived in her basement for a number of years, so we, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we appreciate her very much, and uh, it's good that uh, they are here uh, with us this evening. Let us uh, unite our hearts in prayer. Loving God, we just thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for all your grace, your generosity that you show in our lives. Teach us tonight, Lord, to know that, that as you are so generous and gracious to us, you seek, us, seek for each one of us to share that generosity with one another. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this evening we're going to spend a little time, we're going to talk about the amazing good news of God's grace. And uh, something that many of you know, it's something that is talked about a lot here at Calvary. It's the reason I think that this congregation is uh, just uh, growing and uh, having a lot of great impact on a lot of people's lives. It's a, it's a wonderful gift that God gives, uh, God's rich and abundant life that he wants for each and every person. And so my assignment tonight was to kind of talk about that abundant and rich life that God wants for you and for me. In fact, um, Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, now it's kind of interesting as uh, Sean said, can you do Saturday night and I'm going to do Sunday and then somehow we didn't get, so the passages are not in your bulletin that are lining with the ones I'm using tonight. You're going to have to look up on the screen, which uh, is okay anyway because many people don't look at bulletins anyway. But uh, So we're going to start with John 10, 10 and uh, you many have heard this and this is a great passage where Jesus said, I came that they might have life and might have it to the full, or as some translations say, that they might have it more abundantly. You've heard that before, or with abundance, right? That's a beautiful thing. I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The Bible says that we're saved by God's grace. It means that our only way to heaven is really through the grace and the love of God. The truth is that you can't earn it, you can't work for it, and you can't buy it. God's grace-filled and abundant life is completely a gift from God to you and to me. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, and if any of you uh, grew up going to confirmation or whatever else, you probably said this passage. So I want you to say this passage with me. Many of you maybe had to memorize it in confirmation or whatever else. But read this passage with me. For by grace... You have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Now, if you could work your way to heaven, can you imagine how boring heaven would be? Because everybody would be talking about how they got there. I got there by doing this, and I got there by doing this, and whatever. Heaven would be kind of boring if everybody sat around and talked about what they did. The Bible says... You're saved by God's grace. And not only that, the Bible says that you're forgiven by grace. No one deserves it, but God says to you, I forgive you. We did that as a part of our service tonight. The Bible also says that you're sustained by grace. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, we also have that passage that says, For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is at work in you. That's a great thing. He's working in your life and in mine. God never asks you to do anything that he does not give you the power to do. And that's what grace is all about. And the Bible teaches that you're healed by grace. He heals your broken hearts. He binds up your wounds. It also says that you're liberated by God's grace. You don't have to live under the rules and regulations of legalism. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you are tired and weary, and I will give you rest. You're also given talents by God's grace. God has given each one of you here tonight the ability to do something really, really well. Every one of you has that ability to do something really, really well. You then are to use that gift for him. You're also transformed by God's grace. The Bible says that you're transformed by the renewing of your minds, by maturing in grace. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. So the more you grow in God's grace, the more you grow 
spiritually. So the bottom line is all of the, in all of this is this. It's all by grace. Everything God does in you and for you and through you is by grace. Robert Louis Stevenson said, there's nothing but grace. We walk upon it, we live and die by it. Yet the tragedy of grace of this abundant life is if you have never actually received that grace in your life. If you've never really opened your life up to receiving or living in the abundance that God has for you and me. Therefore, the question is, how do we receive that? How do we live in the grace and the abundance of God? Well, the Bible says it's really done in three words, three simple words, by trusting Jesus. God made it very simple that nobody would have to try to figure it out. It's very easy to understand. It's not 23 steps. It's not four pathways. It's not eight eight guide roads. It's not 32 rituals that you need to go through. The Bible says to simply trust Jesus, and that's it. It simply comes by putting our faith and our trust in him. John chapter 1, verse 17 says, The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So all is grace, and Jesus is the source. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And if you don't get it through Jesus you're not going to get it. A lot of people talk about grace these days. It's a popular word in our country. But if you don't get it through Jesus, we really don't know what grace is about. You don't get grace through religion. Not at all. You don't get grace through a ritual. You don't get grace through rules and regulations. You don't get grace by having the right doctrines. God rather comes through a relationship, through receiving the gift of his love and his friendship in our lives each and every day. Grace, then, is free. We talk about that often. It is free, totally free. All you can do is open your heart to receive this gift. It's a free gift, yet it's not cheap. It costs Jesus his life. Grace, then, really is the most expensive commodity there is because Jesus died on the cross to pay that price so that we might have his grace. And when Jesus died on the cross, he really did three things. First, Jesus paid the penalty for sin. And that means that your penalty for sin has already been taken care of. It's like receiving a get-out-of-jail-free card in Monopoly. That's what grace is. Jesus paid the penalty for sin so that you can be forgiven. Secondly, Jesus broke the power of sin. And what that means is that Jesus now gives you the power to say no to sins, power to change those bad habits, power to change those hurts, power to change those hang-ups that so often mess up our lives. And finally, in the, in the presence of Jesus, sin will be obliterated. One day you're going to go to heaven, and the promise is that there's going to be no more pain, no more struggle there. Sin has been obliterated. And it's guaranteed because of Jesus' cross. So then how can we show gratitude? How can we show gratitude for all of the grace and abundance that God shows for us? That's our theme here at Calvary, spent. How do we share that? We're talking about stewardship. As he shows this abundant grace, this abundance in your life and mine every day, then how can we do that in our lives? Well, first you show gratitude for God's grace by making your life count. The truth is that you can't really understand God's grace and keep living the same way that you are right now. When we're touched by God's grace and abundance, it changes us, it renews us, it gives us a new purpose for living. It really works in our lives. It really changes us and renews us. As a result of Jesus' death on the cross, You were spared for a purpose. Every one of you was spared for a purpose. He did not suffer and die for you so that you could just simply go on living any way that you want to. He made you for a purpose. He redeemed you for a purpose. And he died for you for a purpose. And God then calls you and me, he calls you to fulfill that purpose in your life each day. 
Always remember the abilities, the talents, the opportunities, the education, the freedom, the relationships, all the blessings that you have been given in your life are not given to simply be squandered, not to be used simply for your own success or for your own wealth. It seems to be a theme in America today. It's all about me or it's all about my success or it's all about my wealth. That was never the reason for God giving us his abundance. That's not what it's about. Rather, he has given us all of these gifts for a purpose, for a purpose given to you. And therefore, God wants you to use those gifts for his purpose. He has shown you his grace, and so he wants you to make your life count each and every day, to live an abundant life that shines forth God's amazing grace. As you live each day, you can shine forth that grace in your life each day. Now, a second way to express your gratitude to God is by becoming a generous person. If we want to measure how much one understands in our living in grace, you can really look at their giving. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, and we're going to project that also, says, Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So what was Jesus like? As we think about Jesus, what was Jesus like? Well, Jesus, of course, was a giver. God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave. An individual is never going to become like Jesus unless they learn to be like Jesus. So the Christian life can really be summed up in three words. Love, serve, give. Love, serve, give. So until a person learns to be generous with their time, how are we using our time each day? Generous with our life? Are we sharing our lives with others? Generous with our resources? Generous with our opportunities? Until we learn to be generous in those ways, we're not going to be like Jesus. Because Jesus is one who gave, and he wants us to be like him. The reality is that we need to learn how to do that. Truth is, of course, is that we don't own anything. None of us own anything. God simply loans it to us for 60 or 70 or 80 and maybe in some cases 90 years. But it's all his in the first place. So when my sons, uh, my two sons or my daughter, when they were younger, if they came to me and said, Dad, I want $10, and we gave them $10, and then they went and they bought me a present, it's my money, but they bought me a present. Well, that's what God does for us every day, right? God gives us things every day, and he says, use it for me. Use it. He wants us to use it to make a difference in this world. God gives liberally. He gives generously. He gives abundantly. And then simply he asks, show a little gratitude. Show a little gratitude with what you've got. He says, be generous in giving of yourself. You know, some people say stewardship is only about, about uh, money. We always talk about money. Well, no, be generous in giving of yourself, reaching out, caring for somebody else. Generosity in giving of ourselves. Give a tithe in return. That's something that Wayne was talking about. Look, look at proportional giving or whatever else. Now, why do we do these things? Because God needs the money? No, God doesn't need the money. Rather, God wants you and me to become like him. He asks you to grow in your grace, to grow in the love and to become more like him each day. And he wants each and every one of us to have a Jesus heart, not a stingy heart. Isn't that a great idea? I would like to have a Jesus heart. Wouldn't that be great if every person said, I really want to have a Jesus heart, one that's giving and open and loving and caring? Just think of everybody in our world today with all the craziness that's happening in our country and whatever else. If everybody says, you know, I think I want to be, have a Jesus heart. It would change the world. It would change Washington. It would change everybody because that's, all these things are so different than what Jesus teaches us. He teaches us to give and share because he is a God of abundance and love and caring. Now, the third and final way that you can express your gratitude to God is by telling others the good news of God's grace. 
Acts chapter 20, verse 24, and we're going to project that. It says, but I do not count my life of any value to myself, if only I may finish the, my course in the ministry of the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. It's not simply for myself, but my purpose, again, is to testify to the good news of God's grace. An important part of one's mission in life is to tell others the good news of God's grace. God put each individual on this earth for a reason, I believe. He has a mission that only you personally can fulfill. Each one of you knows Jesus because someone told you about Jesus. Think about your own life. Who, who told you about Jesus? Who passed that message on to you? Why are you here tonight? Who was the influence in your life? And then the question we need to ask is, and who are you going to tell? Who are you going to reach out and tell about the good news of Jesus Christ? If someone died for you, would you want to know about it? Yes, definitely. I'd want to know about that. Well, then that needs to be the motivation behind everything we do here at Calvary. It's one of the main reasons why we talk about giving generously. It's why we talk about being spent and sharing our life for others. Why do we do it? Because we want people to know that Jesus died for them. Jesus died for every single person in this community. He died for every single person in the world. And each week, there are people all around you, people you know, people maybe you relate to, people who are neighbors, people who are friends or other people, but there are people all around every one of us who are unaware that Jesus died for them. They do not know the message that you get to hear here every week. They don't know that. They're unaware that God's grace is available to them. Many people think, I'm unworthy of that, or this God doesn't really care about me, or all those religious things are a bunch of craziness or whatever else. They do not realize that this grace that God has is also for them. There are people all around us every day who don't know that promise. God wants everyone in his family. Everyone needs Jesus. Every single person needs Jesus. Because God cares so much about us, we then care also about others. So one of the ways to show our gratitude for, to God for the gift of salvation is to share that good news with others. Invite somebody to worship. Invite them to come with you to worship. Say, well, drive over and pick you up and bring you along. Invite somebody to your small group. I know we're doing a lot of connecting these days and you've got some new groups. Invite another couple and say, hey, want to come and meet a group of people and we're kind of a crazy group, but come and, come and meet with us. The question I think we need to ask sometimes is, is anyone going to be in heaven because of you? Is anyone going to be in heaven because of you? If you can think of somebody tonight, somebody this evening that maybe you can invite to worship, somebody that maybe you can encourage them to, to bring their kids to Sunday school, Maybe you can invite them to their, your small group. Maybe you can bring them to some other fellowship event. Maybe you can just bring them over to your house and get to know them a little bit better. Well, start praying tonight that God maybe would open their hearts to hear that message. And begin praying that God might use you in that way. Might open those doors where you can have an opportunity to share the good news with others. It's amazing when we pray that message, there might be times and you run into somebody or somebody in a, in a, uh, at work or whatever else, and all of a sudden you say, wow, the door just opened up where I can share about the good news of Jesus Christ. There are countless numbers of individuals today who are desperate for the good news of Jesus Christ. Many people are living under the burden of a lot of craziness in our world. Many people are troubled. Many people are hurting. They need to know the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. It sets people free. It gives people new hope. People are desperate for that. A lot of people today are running from fad to fad. They're running from uh, the latest gimmick. Or they're going to all different kinds of things. Some are trying to find some fulfillment through an affair or through workaholism or maybe simply trying to be perfect. Some people are really trying to I have to be the perfect wife or the perfect husband or the purpose, perfect uh, per worker or the perfect whatever. A lot of people are trying to do it through perfectionism. However, there's a gaping hole in them which only God's grace can fill. 
So each one of you here tonight has the greatest good news in the world today. We have the greatest good news in the world today. Therefore, the way to show your gratitude for this grace of God is make your life count. Every day, make your life count. Living in a life of extravagant generosity and abundance. Shine forth that, that, that generosity and abundance in who you are and the kind of person you are. And then by telling as many people as you can about the good news of Jesus Christ. The generosity of God is amazing. How are we shining that light in our lives each day? Amen.